Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I can put it off no longer, even in my COVID-addled state. Um, uh, I can't let Fistamafel linger for too long. Uh, this puzzle on screen is called Induction. It's by the great man and um, it's got five stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. Quite a simple rule set, um, but Mark's had a go at this and he struggled with it no end. So I think this is going to be a very, very difficult solve, if indeed I can get through it. Um, but we shall <laughs> we, we shall get onto that in a moment. I've got a couple of things to mention first. Um, actually, let's start off with yesterday's video where we had reports when the video was first launched of a lot of people actually all over the world struggling to view the video through the YouTube app. Uh, it seemed to work on people's browsers, but not necessarily in the app. Now, apparently this wasn't something uh, confined to just cracking the cryptic uh, videos launched last night. This was something of a YouTube wide phenomenon. And um, it did seem to clear later on in the evening with we, no idea what was behind it. We did try and re-upload the video, it didn't improve anything and we're sorry to those of you who were uh, looking to watch that video sort of in and around when it came out at 8.30 UK time. Um, if you haven't seen it, do check it out. It's a wonderful puzzle by Aspartagus, all about spaghetti. Um, and um, yeah, it should work now. We haven't, we've got no clue. We've got no clue at all what was wrong with YouTube yesterday, but hopefully it won't happen again today. Um, now, birthday announcements. I want to say a very happy birthday to Dave Beatty. Dave, I think you're turning 47 today. I hope I haven't got that wrong. Uh, your wife, uh, Daniela, uh, wrote to us um, and she wrote a lovely email actually, basically in which she eulogized about your qualities as a son. Yeah, as, as a son, I got that right. Um, as a parent, and also as a husband. So Dave, you are doing something right, my friend, and I hope that you have a splendid amount of cake to celebrate your 47th birthday today. Um, now next, an interesting birthday for a, a young lad in the Netherlands uh, who goes by the name of Wisekick. Um, and apparently, Wisekick, you are part of a Discord group who try and solve cracking the cryptic puzzles every evening. Um, and another member of your, your group, Leslie, wrote to us and said that you often find some really incredible logic in the puzzles and she thought you might appreciate a shout out. So I'm absolutely happy to do that. I hope you have lots of cake as well. And uh, yeah, it's quality to hear that there's, a, there's big Discord groups devoted to solving the puzzles. I love the sound of that. Um, other than that, just to mention that we are very close to the end of June. And at the start of July, on the 1st of July at 4 p.m., we will be releasing um, one of the great things we've ever released um, over on Patreon, which is a, a pack of puzzles all themed around equal sum lines rules by the by the great Joseph Neymar. Um, now, I don't know how many times Joseph's puzzles have featured on Cracking the Cryptic, but I want to say it's... I want to say it's 15 to 20 times. It's a lot of times. Um, he's one of the, yeah, an absolutely brilliant maker of Sudoku. And this is a pack of 13 puzzles, no less. You have to solve the first 12, and then the 13th is sort of um, a combination of everything that's gone before. Uh, those of you who get through it all will absolutely love it. And is it approachable? Yeah, it, well, some of it is, some of it's harder. So it's, it's got a whole range of difficulty to it. Uh, it'll be a challenge and uh, yeah, we're looking forward already to getting the feedback on that. So if you're a patron of the channel, look out for that. If you're not a patron of the channel, it's absolutely worthwhile becoming a patron to do that pack. Uh, it costs a couple of bucks a month to join us on Patreon. And of course, everybody who joins us there enables the channel to keep going. So thank you very, very much for your support. Um, now, I can't put it off any longer. Let's have a look at Induction by Fistamafel and I will read you the rules. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent digits along a green line must have a difference of at least five. So these green lines are German whisper lines. Uh, what that means is if this cell was a one, then this cell would have to be at least five different from one. So it has to be six, seven, eight, or nine. Let's say it's eight. If this is eight, this cell would have to be five different from eight. So it can be three or two. It could be one as well, except there's a one now in the box. So that's how the German whisper rule works, but that's not the end of it. Here we have a rule I've not seen in a long time, at least in one of the puzzles I've solved. Orthogonally adjacent cells 
may not contain consecutive digits. So this is a non-consecutive puzzle. Uh, the most obvious example I can think of when we did one like that was the Miracle Sudoku, but that was a couple of years ago at least. Um, so what that means in this puzzle, let's actually use the, the given two there, you couldn't put one or three in any of those cells. Because if you do, these are obviously orthogonally connected and they are uh, consecutive, which is not allowed. Now obviously we can put the one diagonal. That is not an orthogonal connection. Orthogonal connection means connected along a long edge, not connected at a point. And the way to rationalize that is obviously, if it was connection at a point, you couldn't put a one anywhere in that box, nor indeed a three, and that would be problematic. There would be no solution to the puzzle. So just look for connections in dominoes and you're good to go. Now, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking and see how we go. I didn't say it, Alexa. I didn't. I didn't say Alexa. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. She wants to get in on the act, but she can't now. OK, so it looks like, well, it looks like if I was a constructor, it looks like Fistemabell some found something odd, doesn't it, about horseshoes and German whispers and non-consecutive rules because these four horseshoes um, seem very deliberately placed. But um, I have to say, I haven't immediately got any real clue as to what that means. So maybe what we're meant to do initially is to try and understand how this horseshoe pattern works. I mean, what are, the, what are the things we know about German Whispers? We know, we know two secrets. There are two secrets to German Whispers. The first derives from the second, and the first, uh, well, the second derives from the first, I should say. <laughs> what is COVID doing to me? Um, but the first secret is, of course, you can't put five on a Whisper, because if you do, the next digit is going to be problematic, uh, because it's got to be five different from five. And if we go higher, we get into double digit numbers. And if we go lower, we get into zeros and negative numbers. Now, neither of those have quite evolved into Sudoku yet. So we can't put five on a whisper. And that leads to this oscillating polarity principle, which means that imagine this was a low digit, i.e. a number beneath five. Well, then the next digit on the line has to be above five because it's got to be five different and it can never be five. So it's got to be six, whoa, whoa, whoa. So this has got to be six, seven, eight, or nine. This has then got to go down to one, two, three, four, and this has got to go six, seven, eight, nine again. Now the problem here, well, there's many problems, but one of the problems here is that we obviously don't know yet how this, we, we, know, it, we know how it oscillates, but we, doesn't know, we don't know from what point it oscillates, because I don't know whether this is high or low. Um, I mean, hmm, I know that these four are not high. Anyway, let, let me just um, let me just explore how this works. So let's just put some numbers in here. Let's just let's just guess that it goes like this, and just have a think about what this means. So this couldn't be six, could it? Because six would require one on both sides of it in the box. Wow, I mean, that really doesn't seem like much of a constraint at all. Wow, okay, that is... Oh, I haven't thought about the non-consecutive aspect of this. Just let me think about that for a moment. Is there a problem with some digit in this box now? No, not really. Um, the central cell does see... Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so maybe it's this central cell. Because the central cell is orthogonally next to two low digits and it's orthogonally next to two high digits. So I don't think it has a completely free choice of what it can be. It could be one, I think then these two cells could be three and four. 
But if that's two, you actually, because you can't put one or three into those two cells, you'd have to put four into both of them. So that can never be two. And the corollary of that, if we imagine that rule that we've just been thinking about applied horizontally, is how could this be eight? If this is eight, both of these have to be six, and that won't work. So two and eight can't go in the central position. And actually three is problematical as well. Because if we put three in the center, we've got to put one on both sides of it. Again, because two and four are not legal, not legal entries then for the orthogonal connections to the three. So that must work the same with seven. Thinking about horizontally, yes, we'd have to go double nine. So, okay, so what about four then? Four works, doesn't it? Because can't we go one, two into these cells? Five? Five? Hmm, no, five's okay, I think. That pushes these up to seven, eight, nine, and these down to one, two, three, but I think that's... That seems okay. Right, so the central cell of a horseshoe cannot be two, three, seven, or eight. So let's actually, I'm, I'm fully prepared to pencil mark that, I have to say. So these cells have got to be one, four, five, six, or nine. And these two can't be nine because of the nine here. <laughs> okay, but this that two is really underwhelming, isn't it? It's not doing very much at all. So, mm, let me just think, is that doing something? I don't, I just don't see. How I can take that much further forward than that. And that makes me wonder whether I've got to view these as um, these little horseshoes are sort of combined. I mean I can see for example in this column that if these were all the same polarity they would all have to be low because they couldn't all be high um, because of the nine here. If these were all high digits, then they'd have to be six, seven, eight, and nine, and that would break this. So if these are all the same polarity, they have to be one, two, three, four. Gosh, Maverick flying past outside again. Um, now that would make those two squares five and six. Ah, that's actually broken. That's actually broken, and not for any reason to do with the top of the grid. That's weird. It's to do with what you have to put at the bottom of the grid. Okay, well that's, that's something. So have a look at this column. If we if we do try and argue that the sort of apices of the horseshoes are all the same polarity, then because we know they can't be high polarity, they'd all have to be low polarity. That seems to force these two squares to be a 5-6 pair, but that means these two squares are a 7-8 pair, and last time I checked, 7 and 8 are consecutive. So that's not right. So that tells us that... Right, okay. So that tells us that whatever the polarity of this one is, let's use purple, this one has to be the opposite of purple, and today we will say that that's mm, green or yellow. Yellow. Um, I don't want to use orange and blue yet, because orange, orange is meant to be the digit I use for high colours, isn't it? And blue is the cold, cold digit colour. Um, right, okay. So now I, st but now I still don't know whether purple is high or low. I just know these are different. Right, okay, well I know therefore those are yellow and those are purple. That's the, um, that is the corollary of that piece of deduction. And I can't put, right, I can't put seven and eight down here. 
but I don't uh, okay I don't have to put both of them so whichever of yellow and purple is high it's not necessary for it to be a seven eight pair because I could leave one of seven and eight down here and just have one of them hidden away above I just have to make sure this isn't a seven and an eight This is weird that this solves, isn't it? It's just weird. There's nothing here. I mean, even... It feels like the only thing that you can think about, really, is the apices. That is the plural of apex, isn't it? Probably is. Um, of the horseshoes. And whether they can be the same number or not or the same polarity or not. Again, I mean, I can see looking at, but this, mm, looking along row five, this two is telling us that if these were purple and these were yellow, this purple would have to be high digits. Is there a problem with that? Yes, there is. Where, where would you put three in the row? Oh, that's so that's so ridiculous. So, hang on, is this right? So, if if we try and make these two explicitly these two purple, because I can't make this these four purple digits now. They all obviously all have to be the same polarity. So they're either all high or low. They can't all be low because they'd be a one, two, three, four quadruple, and that's going to break this cell. So they've all got to be high which means they're six, seven, eight, nine. Let's put that in. And I can't put three in the center, so I, I have to put three next to a two in the row, and that's broken. All right, okay, I'll go with that. So that means that these are not purple. So these are yellow, and these are purple. But, uh, so now, the problem is, as soon as you do that, it's like this. All the tension comes out of the row. I mean, I suppose now I know there is a three. Right, there's no three in those two cells. So there's definitely a three in one of those two or one of those two. Right, okay, three cannot go there. I mean, this is clutching at straws, to be honest. But three can't go here, because if that was three, you'd have to put an eight, nine pair in this column, because both of these would have to be five away from three, and the only digits available would be eight and nine. But the problem with that is that why couldn't this be three? Why is that not possible? And the answer is, I don't think there is a reason that can't be three. Because if that's three, I can escape with this cell. This is only one orthogonal, like adjacent connection here along the green line. So I can escape with eight there. Now this now can't be four, that's got to be one. But there's nothing wrong with that. This then has to be six or seven. Oh, although you can't put two in... Ah! Oh, bobbins! Right, sorry. I've missed something totally about this. Oh, right. Okay. Right, scrap all of this. This is... There was, I think, a much easier way into the puzzle. How did I not spot that? Right. Okay, let, let's go back and ask a very generic question about the nature of horseshoes. <laughs> and that question is, can you ever have one and three opposite one another on these horseshoes? The answer is no, because now where do you put two in the box? And because you can't put two in the yellow cells because of the nature of the horseshoe and the oscillating polarity principle, two has to be an orthogonal connection to a one or a three. And that breaks the puzzle. But that logic is going to apply for all sorts of digits, isn't it? Um, well, if it works for 1 and 3, it must work for 9 and 7. So 9 and 7, the question is, where does 8 go? The answer, nowhere. So that doesn't work. 
Now what about two, well, let's ignore this two just for a moment. I just want to think about two and four because that strikes me as three is going to be problematic. Um, in fact, let's, let's, because that's annoying me with the two here. Let's do two and four in those two squares. Yeah, where do you put three in the box now? Nowhere. You couldn't go anywhere. So two and four doesn't work. I'm presuming, therefore, that six and eight don't work either. Let's try six there and eight here. Where does seven go? Answer, nowhere. So six and eight don't work. So there are loads of combinations on the horseshoe. I just didn't notice it when we did the first example. Um, but, well, the only good thing about this is it might, might mean yellow has to be low, I think. Let me just think. So, so six and eight don't work. Two and four don't work. One and three don't work. And um, six, eight, seven, and nine don't work. So there are four, at least, illegal combinations of sort of opposite pairs on the apices of horseshoes. Um, Yet another sentence I never thought I'd say in my life, and yet cracking the cryptic videos allow me to say it. Right, so, so now the question surely is where does three go in this row? And we've worked out now it cannot be purple, because if it is purple I need to accompany it with a one, and that doesn't work because of where the, the, two, the two placement problem. So I think three has to go over this side, and therefore yellow is in fact now known to be low and therefore it should be blueified and purple is now known to be high and therefore it gets the sunny color of orange um, and now one of these is a three which means hmm. well, oh well it means the other ones are four. Oh, this is really clever wow Wow, you can, I can now totally understand why Fistima Fell has found this very this pattern like peculiar and interesting because it's so odd that because now because you can't have the one three problem if you put one and three in these you break the position for two in box four this time what do you accompany the three with well you've got to accompany it with four because of the two here. But now, if this is a 3-4 pair, A, these are not 4s by the power of Sudoku. B, you can't put 4 here because you'd have to put two nines in those two cells. So now I've got a digit. That's 3. That's 4. This is an 8-9 pair. The 4 must be next to a 9. So this is 9. This is 8. 9 comes out of here by Sudoku. 9 comes out of here by Sudoku. And all of a sudden, I feel like we might be able to solve this. I know that's probably putting the cart before the horse. Ah, another. <laughs> um, or even the horseshoe. But, um, okay, so do I, can I now extend this to these two cells somehow? The answer is I don't know. So, so the thing that would be likely broken feels like it would be that, doesn't it? Why is that broken? Uh, it gets very. I think it breaks in this row. That's where I can see it breaking. And there might be other reasons this breaks, but. Yeah, if if all four of these digits are blue, they have to be a one, two, three, four quadruple, which means these two squares are five, six, and it means these squares have got to be seven, eight, and nine. And I don't think there is any way of putting those into the, a, a three cell sequence without forcing two of them to be connected um, orthogonally in a way which is illegal. Um, because how can we put seven, eight, and nine in here? You, co you could never put eight in the middle. What, the problem is the eight. What are you going to put the what? <laughs> the eight is very difficult because it can't go next to seven or nine, yet it must go next to seven or nine. So that doesn't work. I think that is that is the 
the short form. Uh, the short, well, hang on, don't get rid of things we know. We know that that is orange and this is blue, but now we know that this is not orange. So we know this is blue and this is orange. And is this why this is called induction? Um, someone someone who's better at electricity than me will have to tell me is this is, sort of, uh, is induction about alternating polarities across borders or something I don't know it might be I, I remember it as a word from physics at school and I remember it as a no I do remember it from maths and proofs by induction and they were very beautiful things but I don't think this feels more like it's a physics type induction an electrical induction idea um, but now let's just see if we can take this forward rather than me nattering so these squares are now low which means they are one two three and four and these are high which means they are six seven eight and nine now we can't put six here that would require double one I can't put four here that would require double nine hmm okay it doesn't actually do very much Okay, so maybe maybe I've got to use this nine because these are high, aren't they? So they've got to be six, seven, and eight. And we can't put six here because that would require double one. We could put six here potentially. That would force this to be a one. Then this couldn't be a three. Let's remember that. So that would have to be two or four. Would actually here have to be two because four cannot go next to eight or seven. So this square is 1, 2, or 3. This square is 1, 2, or 3. And 3 can't go here, can it? Because that would need 8, 9 in the columns. So this is 1 or 2 now. So we are actually making a tiny bit of progress. 7 could go with 1, 2. Um... Okay, let's check these two then. So these are one, these are cold digits. They're one, two, three, and four. Don't put four in the middle of double nine. If this is four, this would be, oh, I suppose I should label those digits as well. Let's label these and make ourselves feel like we're making progress. Um, I've, re I've really died a death here. I thought I thought we'd broken into it when I got these given well not given they were far from given they were hard earned when I when I earned these digits here but I'm actually not seeing at all what I've got to do next and actually that is something that I'm feeling often when I solve puzzles I have sort of a, a little bit of intuition about where to look next here I have not got a clue don't put six in the middle of double one um, sorry about all the aeroplane noise today as well obviously it is Maverick's birthday or something and he seems to want to buzz past my window repeatedly you're putting me off Maverick uh, ah that can't be five because it would be next to four so that's maybe what I've got to look for next so this is down to just one or six Now these two can't be, they can't be seven and nine and they can't be six and eight. Hmm, okay. So, I don't know, am I going balmy or is this, what, oh, one in row five has to be in one of those two cells for sure. It can never go next to two. So one of these central positions is a one be more useful if it was this one wouldn't it because that would force this to be a three four pair which would and we'd know the order that would be four that would be three this would be eight nine these would have to be uh, I'm not sure six seven and five we wouldn't have placed we'd have to put five here it would be very powerful this would be a six or a seven no this would be a seven and that would be a six the whole row would get dis disambiguated if we could prove that this was a one. So what about if this is a one? If this is a one, 
This has to be from 2, 3 and 4. This has to be from 4, 5 and 6. Hmm. I don't know. There's just, I mean, there's just no communication <laughs> across these boundaries. It's weird. I'm very, very reluctant to... Is it this box somehow? Is that what I'm meant to be appreciating? That doesn't look very appetizing. I have to say 707 in this column. That's okay. Maybe it is this box. 7 can't go next to 8. And 7 doesn't seem to be able to go in any of the other cells. So 7 is in one of those two cells. Which means one of these two cells is a quite a low digit. It's got to be 5 different from 7. So one of these two is a 1 or a 2. But again, I don't because I don't know which of these is the seven. I can't even pencil mark which of these is the one or the two. Wow, I don't know. This this funny thing reminds me of um, one of those cracker toys you get. You know where they you, you twist them together. And then it's like a magic trick. It's like, how do you get them apart? That's what the, that's what this green thing looks like. Um, now, its polarity tells us that those two and those two are the same. But again, here, look, we don't know. We don't know whether this is high or low. Uh, I don't think we do anyway. Do we know? <laughs> um, do we know about that? If if these were low, they couldn't be four, so they'd have to be from one, two, and three. Oh, oh I suppose what we'd have to be careful of there is the con ah the consecutive rule. That that is interesting. So actually, if these are low, they have to be one and three because they couldn't involve a two, or the two would be consecutive to the other purple digit. So this would have to be one, three. These would both have to be high. Hmm, okay, there's definitely something interesting here though. Because remember, one of these is seven and therefore that has got a low digit on its left hand side which would now have to be a two so there'd have to be a two in one of these but then the other one of these so let's say it was this one that was seven two we don't know which one it would be but let's just say it was this one now this one has to have the fourth low digit on it um, because we've used up two one and three and there must be a low digit in one of those because of the oscillating polarity principle so this would have to be four nine and in fact you'd know the order good grief that would be the four that would be the nine I'm actually just going to put that in for a second let me just stare at this so then we'd have five six and eight that couldn't be five that couldn't be Ooh, that would have to be five that would have to be six that would have to be eight the whole box gets disambiguated wow well that's very interesting that thing is i can't see what's wrong with that that could be correct that could be correct right let's try and prove or disprove the alternative hypothesis which is going to be that these two digits have to be high digits so if these are high digits we don't have a four looking at them but we do have a seven in one of these so these two squares couldn't be an eight nine pair because they would be consecutive so this one of these has to be six um, that is true but the other one we don't know there's definitely a six which means there's definitely a one in one of these because six has to be um, six has to be across from a one. Oh, so this couldn't be six yeah because that would lead to double one so actually we would know that this was a six we'd know this was a one we'd know this square was a 
an eight or a nine, and we know the seven. Okay. Oh, this is so clever. <laughs> okay. So, again, as it did with the one and the three pair here, this is monstrously forcing. Because this time, this being a six, you can't put the six next to the seven, so you've got to put the seven there. Which means this can't be eight and has to be nine. Now you've got to put eight on this one, because this one hasn't got a high digit on it yet. You can see that that's going to have to be the eight. Which means this is a lowish digit, one, two, or three. This is a lowish digit. So both of these are low. But I can't see why this is breaking. And one of these must break, because otherwise we're going to be in bifurcation world. And that is not a world I like to spend time in. Um, let me just think about this for a second. So this... This has to be one, two, or three. Hmm. Right, you can go further than this, actually, thinking about it. So what I'm noticing now... Yeah, in fact, this is probably what I should have done before. Okay. Okay, I'm, going to, I'm just going to pause on this. And I'm going to have a think harder about this box. Because there are some things that we can deduce about this box that might help us. I certainly, I've, I've just seen how I can place 5 in this box by thinking about where 5 goes in this box. Because where does 5 go in this box? And the answer is it cannot go next to 4. So I've got to put it over there. But similarly, where does 2 go in this box? Well, that can't go next to 3, so that's got to go over there. Where does 7 go in this box? Well, that's got to go in one of those squares because it can't go next to 8. Hmm, okay, maybe it's not as good as I hoped. But what it, what it does do, once you get the 6 here, because you've got a 5 in one of these, you can't put the 5 here, you can't put the 5 on the whisper, so you'd have to put the 5 here. Now the 4 has to go there. Ooh, hang on a minute, what's going on here? I'm just going to keep going with this. I still can't quite see why it's broken. This now is a 1 or a 2. Oh, this has... Yeah, this is this is all getting very cluttered. Because this now cannot be a 1 or a 2, because it would be connected with the, with the 1, 2 here, across a boundary, that must be a 1 or a 2. There's a 2 looking at that, so that actually has to be a 1. That's a 2, and that's a 3, and I've broken it. So this doesn't work. This doesn't work, but that's very hard. That's very hard to see. Um, now, what I think I've got to do here is to appreciate. So I think this is visualizable. Let me just think about how to visualize this in a slightly more, a slightly better way. So what we're saying what we're saying is that basically yeah, it is hard actually it is hard for me to let's just go back through it let's go back through it and see if we can we can see this more more clearly so what we're saying is if this is if these two digits are high, we know these two digits are the same polarity. So if these are high digits, because they are not seven and they cannot be an eight, nine pair, they must be six and an eight or a nine. Now you can't put six here because that would cause the double one problem. So this forces the six, which forces the seven, which forces the nine. All of that is very visualizable. You now know there's an eight on this one because you need a high digit on it. That's got to be here. <coughs> That's got to be here. So therefore, it's reasonable to say, okay, these two digits are 
from low polarity. And we've got to be careful with that because we cannot have these be consecutive. But we know that this is a 1 or a 2 because it's, it is next to 7 on a whisper. So we now know for certain this is a 3. Yeah, this, this, is, this is feeling better, which forces this to be 1. And now, you, now you've got a problem with 2 and 4 in the box. Because where can you put 2 and 4? You've got 2 and 4 looming down on this cell using the power of Sudoku. I can't put 2 or 4 here. And I can only put one of them in the corner and it's broken. In fact, I can put the four, only put the four in the corner and then the two has no home. So, okay. All right. So it is, it is just about foreseeable, I would say. Um, I also think it's clearly deliberate because this is, it's, it's very interesting the way that these little lines work together. It feels very natural to see the pat, the way that they flick through, but I'm not going to claim that's easy. That is really very hard. But it is true, and therefore we can, I think, use it. Now, what we can say now, though, is exciting, because now we can come back to this, having proved that these are not high digits. So now we know these are from 1, 2, and 3. We know we can't have 2 involved, therefore, otherwise they will be consecutive. So this is a 1, 3 pair. We know that the 7 now has to be next to a 2 on its line. Which means there is now a 2 in one of these two cells at the top. Now that we know, because of the weirdness that's going on in the puzzle, that 2 can never be an accompaniment or have, a, have 4 as an accomplice on the apices. Because if it does, we have a 2-4 there and there would be nowhere to put 3 in the box. So we can now remove 4 from this cell. Yeah, that is the world's worst deduction, sorry, but it's, it's what I could see quickly. Now, the other thing I think we've got to think about, though, is, the, is whichever of these lines is not the 7-2 line, because that line is going to need a low digit on it, and that low digit needs to be a 4, and 4 on a whisper must connect to 9, so it cannot go on the left-hand side because that will plonk a 9 here and clash. So actually, though, we now know this is a 4-7 pair, and we know this is a 2-9 pair. Uh, let's put that in and see if that helps us. So now this is not a 4. Um, okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> Please. Um, 5, I can see now, has to be in one of these two cells. So, in fact, what are, what are the options for these three cells now? These are 5, 6, and 8, with this not being 5. Oh, this is beautiful. That's beautiful. Look, that's a 6 or an 8 in the corner. doesn't get a song, but it does mean there is simply no way this can be a 7, because it will be consecutive with that digit, whatever this digit is. So that's a 4 which means that we know that's the 9, therefore this is the 2 and this is the 7. And now this digit can't be 6 or 8 and has to be 5 in order to not be consecutive with itself. This 9 now sees this digit, that can't be an 8, so everything in this box all... And no, it is, because the 4 can't go next to a 3. So the 3 is next to an 8 or a 9 in this cell, the 1 is next to a 6 or an 8 there can't be 7, 9 because of the um, 7, 9 looking at it. So now, oh look, this is beautiful. That can't be 8 because it would be next to 9 and these would be consecutive. So that's 6 and we can colour these in, the proper colours. So this is now cold digits. These are hot digits. And 6 has got to be in one of those two cells by Sudoku. And now we can get rid of 5 from this cell. Look. Now five, five, there's a five over there. Um, I've got a, oh, okay, I've got a, a one, six pair in this column. So that means I've got a two, three pair up here. Two, three was not one of the illegal combinations, so that's probably good. 
This can't be 6 anymore because it can't be next to 1. So, oh, okay. So now we know that there is a, oh, in fact, yeah, this is lovely. We know for certain there is an 8 in one of these two cells because otherwise there'd be a 7, 9 pair and you couldn't put 8 in the box. So where does the 8 go? 8, 8, it must go here. So that's another hard one digit, look. Okay. Now, can we somehow use that to our advantage? So, hmm, yeah, okay, that we know that one of these is a two, so there's no way this can be have a one in it, that's got to be six, so that's got to be one. Now, six can't be next to seven, so that's nine. Good grief, okay. So perhaps, I don't know, I'm tempted to start pencil marking these fully now just to see what's going on. Two, five, six, and seven. So we can get rid of sixes from this side. We can get rid of twos from this side because they'd be next to three. So that's a five, seven pair. Wow, okay, that's very welcome. Which means these two squares are a two, six pair. And can we do better than that? Well, I can do better with the 5, 7. The, five, the 7 can't be next to the 8. So that's a 5. That's a 7. So these two cells at the top are now 1, 4 pair. And whichever one the 4 is can't be next to the 3. Now these two squares are a 5, 7 pair. So, okay, so if this turned out to be, oh, this can't be six. If that's six, it will be next to a five or a seven. So that's two, that's six. So this is no, no longer two. Now this is a one or a three, which means this is not a one or a three because that would give us the illegal pairing that would make two impossible in the box. So this is two or four. This is not one because of this one here. So this is five or six now. That's not six, whoopsie. Um, okay, we know one of those is a 2, because otherwise this is a 1-3 pair now. We don't seem to be able to put 4 into either of those. And... Okay. Wow. What on earth do we do now? And this is why this puzzle is odd, is that even though we've just sort of broken in and got loads of digits, I don't know where to look now. I'm sort of thinking about this column on the basis that at least these digits are affected by the non-consecutive rule, by what's on their left-hand side. But I really would like to know more about this, these horseshoes in the top right of the grid. Sort of feels like I ought to be able to do better with these. I don't see how to do it. I just don't. Um, no, I was about to say this, this is restricted. It's not. This can be two or four, so this can be seven. The two's already done its magic in terms of limiting three in the row, I think. So we've got the one and the three placed. So I don't see what non-consecutive... Oh, two. Two's got to be in one of those two cells. So two's got to be in one of these three cells. Two is not there, look, because of the two in one of those cells. So two... No, I don't know what that means. No. Nine in the bottom row by Sudoku. Can't be here, look, because then it would be next to eight and those would be consecutive. So nines have got one of two places to go. Uh, 
Um. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I think I think we're going to have to do it then. We're going to have to look at this column. I've got no better ideas. So this cell, it could be one, three, four. <laughs> it can't be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. It can't be seven because it would be next to eight. So actually, one, three, or four into this cell. And now I've not. I've got the feeling, you know, I could be missing more restrictions on that. Okay, well, let's try this one then. So, one, three, four again, five, six. This can't be seven, it would be next to six. Um, so, it can't be five, six, seven, eight. Can it be nine? Maybe. Um, Far from sure, <laughs> far from sure <laughs> whether I can do more eliminations there. But that one is slightly restricted. Now this one can't be five, look. So that's got to be, and it, oh, and it can't be six. So that's seven, eight, or nine. <sighs> okay. So that feels like it's almost doing something. Oh, he's got the bones of a triple in the column, the bones of a triple in the row. Ah, ah, this is this is good. Right, that there can't be a six anymore because if this is a six, that's a five, and those two would be consecutive. So that's not six, and that gives me a triple in the row. So that's a five or a six, and now one of these is a six. And whichever one is a six cannot be next to a seven there. So this is now eight or nine. So now, let's take this another stage further. These two cells cannot be a seven, nine pair because then we'd have the eight problem in box six. So this has to have an eight in it, which means that is no longer an eight. And we are getting this done now. So now, Um, hang on. Now, I'm very sure we can do something slightly better than this. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. Uh, oh, goodness me. I, th I think there's something going on here between this 789 triple maybe and this column four stuff. What about that digit? Let's, let's, right. Oh, this one's restricted. Because that can't be one or three, it would be next to two. So this one is four, five, oh no, six. Oh, it's not six. Four, five, uh, or eight, maybe. No, eight's not right, because it would be next to seven or nine. So that's four or five only now. So I only have to get this one down by one more digit. And the way to do that is don't know. I don't know. Okay, maybe we carry on. Problem well mm, the problem with this cell, and I'm gonna say this cell, is I don't see what benefit I'm getting from these left hand cells. I can see this can't be 6 because it would be next to 5 or 7, but I can still see it can't be 6 using the 6 in the column. I don't think there's anything else I can remove from this. This one might be better because obviously this is seeing real digits on its left. Yeah, okay, and actually this cell can't be 1 or 3 because it would be next to the 2 that I've got to put in one of those cells. So this cell is restricted. This cell cannot be 1, 2 or 3, 4 five or seven seem to be the options. Don't know. That doesn't seem good either, does it? Really? <laughs> it really doesn't. Um, 
Oh, I tell you what, the same thing I did here, I could do there. If that's one, that's two, and they're consecutive, that's not one. So this is either four or five. So, mm, okay, that's interesting. If this is five, that has to be five in this row. That has to be six, and then you can't put seven there, so that has to be seven. So if that's five and that's seven, that becomes four, and that becomes five. I don't think that works actually. Didn't I say that was five if I put five here? This is a bit chainy. I don't really like it. Uh, if that's five, if that's five, I've got to put a five in this row. It's got to go here. That's five, that's five. Because this is six, that puts the seven here. But then five, seven means that's four, which means that's five. And I get two fives in box five. Wow. That's the sort of thing Mark would be in paroxysms of delight about. But I don't really, that does not feel like a Fistimafel step to me. It just doesn't. I'm going to carry on. I'm, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes hunting for other things. Um, But where? <laughs> That's the question. Where should we look for other things? Um, yeah, it would only give, well, I'm not sure exactly how much that would, it would actually give me some things, wouldn't it, as well? I get the two here. I've not used this clue. Is this clue somehow saving the game? I very much doubt it because it's only two cells long. Um, now, what is the restriction on this? If this is a high digit, it has to be eight, look, because it would be seeing six, seven, and nine. So either this is eight, in which case this is a low digit, which would have to be one or three. which is interesting in that that puts pressure on this being a two or or the well the problem is or this is ah ah right here is right this is more fistimafelian this is more fistimafelian because what right if this is not eight we know it's a low digit now one thing that's interesting about this digit is it is not a four because if it's a four that's a nine and that's going to break this cell so if it's a low digit what low digit is it well it's not three and it's not four so it's one or two well now i'm going to claim this digit can never be two anymore because if that digit is a two I have to make this square non-consecutive with it, which means I have to make it an 8. And that means I have to put a 1 or a 3 there. And that's going to be consecutive with my 2. So that's wrong. That is wrong. Okay, so let's... So that means this is not 2. Which means this is 2 in the box. Which means that's 9. Because that's squ our pencil. We had a 9 into one of those two squares. So now... Ah, yeah, okay, this is better. This is better. So now, so this tiny little line here shunts the 2 down here, which forces the 9 here, which means this is not 9. It means this is 7, which means that's now a 4, 5 pair in the column. 7 comes out of here. So this is an 8, 9 pair. 4 comes out of here because of the uh, one, th the 4, 5 pair. So these two squares at the top are 2 and 8. Which I've no doubt is very important for some reason I can't quite work out. Um, okay. 
Oh, okay, I've now got a 1-3 pair. Oh, no, hang on. I don't think I finished pencil marking this. If this Right, yeah, we need to think about this cell a bit more, don't we? Because I was doing the logic around the 2 here, but I didn't consider what if this is a high digit. Well, actually, if it is a high digit, it has to be a 7. It can't seem to be 6, can't seem to be 9, can't seem to be 8. So this is 1, 3, or 7. That might be possible. So either this is 8 going with 1, 3, which would give me a 1, 3 pair. Or this is low going with 7, which would force the 6 over here. Okay. Okay, so let's... I'm, oh, okay, I've now got a 4, 5 pair in this row. Did I have that before? Don't know. Maybe. Um... So this row needs 1s, 2s, 3s and 7s. So this square can't be 1, 2 because it would be orthogonally next to that. So that's 3 or 7 only. Oh, it's so close to doing something there, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. And this square is 1, 2, 3 or seven it's not two so it's one three or seven again this could have pressure on it from this digit but i don't quite see how to do that maybe the bottom row we need three five seven and eight so this square cannot be three in fact, neither of those two can be three, can they? Because they would be next to two. So three is shunted over onto the right-hand side. Maybe we get three in the corner. Um, that can't be eight. Look, it would be next to nine. So this is down to five or seven now. Which I'm sure is somehow important. <laughs> In manners I can't work, can't quite discover. Uh, okay, don't know. Three, okay, so there's definitely a three in one of those three cells. So, okay, is that definitely true? I think that is true. So what I'm thinking about now is where does four go in this box? Oh, yeah, yeah. And where does eight go? Oh, there's all sorts. Right. This is magical. It is magical. Right. This is so much more. This little line here is doing absolute wonder work. So question one, where does four go in this box? Now, I can't put four here because it would be next to three. So four is in this this little domino. Now, where does eight go in this box? Now, eight's not in these three cells. It doesn't seem to be able to be there. So eight is in this little domino as well. So this is a four, eight pair, and this is no longer eight. Now, if this is no longer eight, this is no longer low, and that has to be seven. And now seven can't go next to eight, so that's four, that's eight. This is three. So that's a one, two pair, and this has become a seven. This three can't be next to two, so that's a one, that's a two. Good grief. Eight can't be next to seven, that's five. So all of these cells are now, well, these squares are now three, seven, and eight, and we need the three to sort of act as, act as gooseberry and get between the naughty seven and the eight who would otherwise be cuddling each other far too closely. Unfortunately, that doesn't put three in the corner, but that now is a seven, eight pair. This three has given me a one here. Which I'm sure is very important for the following reason. I haven't got a clue. Come on, brain. Come on, brain. Come up with a reason. Brain, do it. Uh, your brain, you're useless. Okay, this is a one or a three. Um, okay. All right, what are these digits then? 
1, 2, ah, 1 and 2 and 5. So again, we've got to play gooseberry with the 5 and keep the 1 and the 2 apart, otherwise they would be consecutive. So this 5 now gives me a 6 here, which gives me a 4 here, which gives me a 5 over here, a 4 here, which is interesting, maybe, no, uh, no, <laughs> ah, well that 4 there is giving me a 2 here though. Okay, so now I can get rid of the six from this cell. So I've got a seven, eight pair in column eight. What about those two digits? What are they? They are six and four. Ah, I can't put the six next to the seven, of course. So six goes here, four goes here. Now four by Sudoku goes here. Right, okay. So now this box needs three, five and seven. And the seven tells us the order. So that's seven. This is a three, five pair, which means these two squares now are six and eight, which means that square is a five. But eight tells us the order here. Eight and six go into the grid. It's a bit terrifying this because it's so possible that I've, you know, that you've made an error and now you're gonna run into a consecutive pair and it's just gonna be, oh no. Um, one, three, and nine here. Uh, well, we can't put one or three next to two, so that's got to be nine. This has got to be one or three. I don't quite know how this is getting resolved, this, this pattern here, but, oh, yes, I do. Three there, easily. One, three, three, one. One has to be in, well, this, these squares here are a one, four pair. Oh, which looks a bit deadly-ish, doesn't it? Ugh. So I definitely need something to help me get rid of what looks like a deadly pattern. I see, and by getting, you can see whichever one of these is two will break the deadly pattern. So I shouldn't, I don't think I have to be too concerned about that yet. Although it is a bit terrifying. Um, what about uh, six and nine into these cells? Yes, that's good. Because I can't put nine next to eight. So that's six, that's nine. It doesn't do anything. Um, oh, bother. Oh, botheration. Right, okay. So something else will have to do with magic. Right, that's a six by Sudoku. This box needs three, five, and nine. Okay, let's put all of the options in and see what we can. We can el eliminate five from here. We can eliminate nine from here. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I've got a three, five pair here, it seems. So nine in this column seems to have, well, no. So this square seems to have to be nine. That's what that's telling me. Okay, I'll believe that. Which means that's a nine and that's an eight. Which means that's an eight and that's a seven. A six can't be next to a seven. So that eight and seven get resolved. That means this eight and this two get resolved. The two and the three get resolved. Don't put one next to two. So the four and one, the one and the four, uh, the seven and the five simply by Sudoku. And now that's a five. So that's a five, that's a three, that's a three, and that's a one, and that's a two. And that is how to solve, I think, a quite remarkable puzzle. Let me... Yes. Oh, goodness me. That was very, very clever. Uh, I mean, almost too clever for me in a way. It's, there's so much intricacy around the ideas in this. It's beautiful the way that there's this sort of inductive reasoning. I don't know if that's the right word, but the, the, the way that you can prove that the, the apices of the horseshoes have to have very particular patterns, even when you don't know whether they're high or low. And then this, what was going on in this box? That was crazy stuff. You know, to disprove that we could work out this was the same polarity, but then to work out what the order was, was very tricky. And what I really liked, I, found, I did find some logic that would have allowed me to write in a digit here. Um, but I'm very glad I didn't pursue that. And I looked instead for the logic around this tiny little whisper line, which worked magic. And the path using this whisper line was really beautiful. 
uh, whereas I think this this felt very much like a forcing bifurcation marky marky type deduction. No, don't like those. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, sorry, it's a very long video. I don't know if that's my COVID brain. I suspect it's more that just Fistum Fell is hard. Um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.